Sometimes differential equations are presented to us in a way for which it's not easy to do the, to do the, the solution immediately, and we have to use something called separation of variables. Now let's look at this. Suppose you have some m of x plus n of y dy dx equals 0. Um, if you have a differential equation of this form, then you are able to do what we call separation of variables. And let me show you, in a very general sense, what you do. Um, you can rewrite this as n of y dy dx is equal to minus m. And now, putting this in differential form, n of y dy is equal to minus m of x dx. Now, you're able to integrate both sides and get a solution. Let's um, do a little bit of practice. Can we put this differential equation um, in separated form? And the answer is, well, of course, 3y, oops, 3y dy dx is equal to negative x squared. Um, and so, putting this in differential form, 3y dy is equal to negative x squared dx. Indeed, we can integrate this. So 3y squared over 2 is equal to negative x cubed over 3 plus c. Now note, we always put the plus c on the right. And in general, we clean this up so that we have a minimum amount on the left. Let's see if we can separate this one. Well, the answer is yes. First thing you need to do is rewrite this um, as dy dx. And I'm going to go on and divide through by sine. Uh, cosine divided by sine is cotangent. And it's a matter of now putting it in differential form. And then, of course, you can integrate. This one's a little bit messier, but not really. Um, I'm going to rewrite this as x divided by ey plus 1 dy dx is equal to 2. Now, I'm going to get all of the x terms to the other side. So 1 over e to the y plus 1 dy dx is equal to 2 over x. And now I put it in differential form. dy divided by e to the y plus 1 is 2 dx over x. And now I can integrate, if I can integrate, of course. Now, let's do a problem where um, I separate these variables. I want to get, um, it's already in differential form, so I want all the y's on the left and all the x's on the right. So dy divided by y is equal to x dx divided by x squared plus 4. When I integrate this, I get natural log of the absolute value of y is equal to, now when I do this integration, if this is 2x dx, and I put a half out here, u is x squared plus 4, this is du, I get 1 half the natural log of x squared plus 4. Now you note I don't need absolute values because this is positive, plus c. Now I want y by itself, so I'm going to make this equation the exponent of e. All right, so I'm going to write it like this, and it's going to be this whole thing. So e to the log of the absolute value of y is the absolute value of y. Now, this is e to the 1 half natural log x squared plus 4 plus c. Now, this didn't simplify nicely, did it? So, let me rewrite this as e to the 
natural log of the square root of x squared plus 4 plus c. Now let me use a, another uh, trick here. This is e to the natural log of the square root of x squared plus 4 times e to the c. I was, I'm just using the, the powers rule. Now this right here is a constant. It's just a constant. So let me call this c1. So this becomes c1 times. Now e to the log of the square root of x squared plus 1 is just the square root of x squared plus 1. And this is the absolute value of y. So I know y is either plus or minus c. Now it doesn't matter whether my constant is positive or minus. Um, I'm about to use um, initial conditions. This is a general solution. This one did have initial conditions, right? I lost my problem. Oh, I didn't. All right. Now, it turns out you can just absorb this plus or minus into your constant. So it's just some constant we'll call c prime square root of x squared plus 1.